Hey, hey, what's up guys? Today I will show you even more tips and tricks that you might not know yet. Like you might have seen from the title, these can be considered quite advanced and tend to not be that obvious when playing the game. But yeah, they can all be really useful. So let me know in the comments which ones you like and which ones you didn't know, etc, etc. And yeah, let's just get right into it. Tip number one, opening iron crypts without a swamp key. So this is a really useful trick for when you forget your swamp key and you want to enter some swamp crypts but you don't want to go all the way back to your base. It's also useful if you just want to have an extra inventory slot for free or even if you want to access swamp crypts in the early game before even having a swamp key. So how do you do it? Well there are various ways and my favorite way and also the fastest way is by just going to your crafting menu build a workbench near you and then approximately clip a chair on the door like this then when your character is seated just walk forward by pressing W when you do this you will go through the closed door and voila you'll be in the crypt don't clip your seat too much inwards though as you can in fact get stuck behind the door that way an alternative way is by mining beneath the crypt until you're below the entrance zone and then when you're below the entrance zone, you want to use the erased ground option from your hoe. And when you do this, you will yeah, basically teleport to the inside of the crypt. But this only works when the iron crypt is on land though. So not that practical for crypts in watery areas. But the chair always works. So in my opinion, just use the chair. And with this, we finally have some real use for the chair. Tip number two, using the interior of trees in the swamp. We will be staying in the swamp for this one. So you know how the swamp is filled with those large trees, right? Many of them will have an opening at the bottom of the tree, a crack basically. You can often use these cracks to enter the tree and sometimes it will be easy and sometimes you'll have to use your pickaxe, but when you do so, you can enter the tree and make use of the interior. Wow. And you can use these interiors for sheltering from enemies, but also for applying an easy rested buff with the sheltered status effect as you will get rid of the wet debuff in here. Place your campfire like usual and you will get a nice rested buff. Tip number three, using AOE weapons as an ore locator. So this neat trick works if you have either the stack breaker or the iron sledge. So either weapon will work and you can use them as a personal ore locator. What this means is that when you smash the ground with these weapons, a message will pop up on the screen saying too hard when there is an ore vein nearby. So here's a demonstration for this. I hit here, no message. When I hit the ground again, but with the silver vein in the radius of the weapon's attack, it will in fact give you a too hard message at the correct location. And this way you can use these AOE weapons to locate ore at any time. It can be useful when you're mining down deep and you want to know in what direction you need to go accordingly. So in this case you will use the stag breaker or the iron sledge, you smash the ground and it will give you a message telling you in what direction you need to mine. You can even use these weapons and replace the wishbone altogether, making room for equipping the McKinjord, McKinjord, or however you say it. Due to the fact that you can't equip the McKinjord and the wishbone together, this way you will have that increased inventory space, while also having a tool to locate all the ore near you. So just keep smashing the ground every few steps, look for two hard messages, and you will find ore that way instead very easily. Tip number four. Stop, don't do it. Have you ever had this happen? Yeah, you did. I know, I know. Don't lie, don't lie. You're walking and oops, accidentally you press the activate your forsaken power button. You get a bonus effect that's completely wasted for no reason. But to prevent this, you can cancel this animation and also the activation of the power itself really easily. Just press jump when you accidentally activate the forsaken power. Pressing jump will immediately cancel it and boom, it's like nothing ever happened. You can cancel crafting items as well. If you misclick the craft button, just press it again to cancel it. To make things even better, you can even cancel the card's annoying mechanisms. Instead of trying to aim your cursor specifically at the minuscule string in front of you and pressing the button to leave the card, just dodge roll. When you dodge roll forwards, you will instantly leave the card. And most importantly, you will do it in fashion. <laughs> A little trivia question for the viewers. What's the most annoying thing to accidentally do? Option number one, activating your forsaken button. Option number two, crafting something. 
Option number three, the card, period. Option number four, all of the above. Tip number five, exterminating bees. Trying to destroy beehives with your weapons can be quite annoying sometimes due to the placement of the beehive. And when you get close, you will get poisoned as well, which can do significant damage in the early game. However, you can really easily destroy a beehive and secure the loot with the following trick. Just build a workbench close to you, get your hammer out and then destroy all the surrounding walls and tiles from a distance. Since the beehive is glued to these walls and these roof tiles, it will automatically be destroyed and all the loot will just fall down. It's beautiful. It's a really easy way to get stacked on queen bees. Tip number six, beehive equals roof. Yeah, you heard it right. You can use beehives as roofs. Now, this is a very unique way of making a functional building. Therefore, it's also a really cool application. Basically, to demonstrate this, here is a workbench that does not work without a proper roof, obviously. However, dropping a beehive above the workbench will let the game register that you do, in fact, now have a roof. And I'll show you. Boom. A working workbench but I can feel you panicking with one question lingering in your mind will the bees still be happy this way the bees will still be happy this way don't overdo it though But yeah, with beehives you can definitely make some crazy and very cool designs. And people will give you those juicy street credits for having the unique design of having beehives as your roof. Tip number 7, your personal airplane. Now you might have known that you can ride dead squidos. But did you also know that you can use them for more than just memes? It all depends on what you want to do, but I'll give you an example. If you find a dead squido in the wild and you observe his flying route, then you can make use of that. Let's say I desperately want to get to the top of that very large dildo shaped stone pillar, because I want to build my base there. Now I see a dead squido, I hop on it as my personal taxi, and then it will just bring me to the top. Easy peasy, and I don't have to build 100 stairs to get there. Nope, nothing of that nature. And now that I'm here, I can build a nice looking base. Oh, by the way, bonus tip, if you want a lot of stone really quickly, just start mining at the bottom of these pillars. They will instantly explode when the bottom layer is gone and you'll get a massive amount of stone really quickly. The final tip, the perfect dock. So making a dock in Valheim is really useful for controlling and parking your ships. But have you tried using handles to control your ship's position? Specifically, I'm talking about these handles. Build these on your dock like this and make sure that they are above your ships. Then you can use them to move your ship. It's like an in and out mechanism and it's really cool because this way you can perfectly park your ships and really conveniently also leave your dock when you're going out on a sailing adventure. So that was it guys, don't forget to smash the like button and the subscribe button, even better if you also turn on the notifications, this time I'll give you ice cream if you do so, yeah. And I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one, bye.